Thank you for joining us. You bet. Yeah. So, um, so Mike, I've got uh, about 38 or 39 of our, our top MBA students here at Cal Poly who uh, want to hear us talk a little bit about lean and specifically about lean accounting, if that's okay with you. Well, it's my favorite topic, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you would be ready for that. So, so Mike, um, the one thing I'm not ready for is to give you and do justice to your introduction. So if you could maybe introduce yourself, just, you know, the Cliff Notes version in uh, in 38 seconds or less. Is that is that a good tack time for you? Yeah, you got to set the timer, though. So Mike DeLuca, um, I, I've been in finance for about three decades, um, mostly in healthcare. started in the early 90s, worked 20 years in an organization where I was responsible for lots of aspects of finance, mostly F financial planning analysis, decision support, implemented lean, um, ran the organization lean for over 10 years, uh, did a lot with lean finance, lean accounting, uh, left the organization, did eight years of consulting, and now I'm back in a CFO role in, in, an, in an organization that's adopted lean in operations, but we're, um, I'm working to, to, to bring it to the finance team too. So I don't know if that was 38 seconds, but it was pretty brief. Yeah, no, that, that's good, Mike. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing that. I, um, so, you know, I know I gave you a, a standard of list of questions, and, and it, the first question usually starts out with, um, you know, how'd you get to, or, or actually, I, I guess the first question is like, what's mean about your job, right? So, you know, maybe you know you're you're kind of stepping in this role about, you know, uh, you know, getting sort of lead to play nice, I guess, on the uh on the accounting side finance side of a business um yeah. maybe you can sort of start out about like what, what do you see that role being or what does that role look like so just, i think starting out the i mean this is pretty common i think with a lot of lean uh leaders coming in um, first thing to do is really to go observe the current state. So I'm spending a good bit of time like we're in the second phase of uh, month end close now with the team. Um, and I've just been uh, walking the process from the perspective of process observation. The next in the next now I'm getting the team ready for the next phase of close to do data collection on why it's going the way it's going. And I'm you know giving them a you know challenge to cut the close window in half. Um, <clears throat> but um, that's that's one of our first process improvement opportunities. I think from lean finance leadership coming in, it's important uh, to really be thinking both in terms of what's what's going on in finance and accounting, but also what's going on in operations that's driving the accounting results. So, so part of it is me partnering with the head of clinical operations to go out and see what's going on, do process observation and, uh, and, and, and be, you know, what, what I imagine we would say in Gemba, right out there with the clinical teams. So that's, that's just, that's a quick answer. If you want to explore that, or I have other questions, I didn't want to take too much time on any one question so that we have latitude to jump around. Yeah, no, and um, and I'm going to encourage the, the students either um, online or the students here in class <clears> and, <throat> and, and we'll, we'll jump into the conversation because I don't want it necessarily to be all about me. Um, and uh, but, but I'm, but I'm <laughs> you know, Mike's committed to, to spending a half hour with us. He's a busy guy and I, I really appreciate it. Um, but I also want to make sure that we're delivering the, the value and the understanding for the students. Mike, to, to tie it into the class a little bit, um, uh, last Monday, we sort of started like the first half of a poll simulation, right? Or push-pull simulation, right? So we were, we were doing little index cards and putting them in envelopes. And, you know, we, we had a, a nice little mess. And we we're actually, after we get done with you, we're going to start sort of listing you know, our observations and asking maybe you know, what are, what are some good questions to ask about the process or, you know, ask maybe about what the customer wants? Do, do you have a, do you have a set of questions or things like you, you said you were observing? Um, yep. Yeah. How do you coach the team or what, what do you ask them to look at or how do you approach it? Sure. And that's really good. And, and some of the conversation we've been having lately. So I started with um, the management team and we had a, a, a first of what's going to be a number of working sessions on what processes are we responsible for? Who's the customer? What's important to them? 
um, how do we know, how would we measure our adherence, our, our performance against that requirement? And then, and then what's the target? So an example is payables. Who, who's the customer of payables? Well, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I won't go into all the possible stakeholders, but the vendor wants to get paid the correct amount on time. How do we know that? Um, and then, you know, we've got, we've got data in our AP system that says, when did we get the invoice? When did the payment go out the door? There are other things too, like, did we incur late charges? Did we miss early payment discounts? But I think one of the things that I want the team to start looking at is what now? Okay, great. Now we're measuring this lead time between when the invoice comes in, in the door and when the payment goes out. What's actually happening and how would we relate that to what is what we would call value added in making that payment happen versus waste? And so, so the team's learning an awful lot about what the different types of process waste are so that they can look at that. But I think it's important to have the context of waste in the, and waste in the context of what value for what customer or stakeholder. So that's, that's one example. Um, you know, it, it, it's funny, my, we're, we're also sort of talking at the beginning of class, I was, uh, you know, so one of my challenges is that an on-time start to this class and we were talking about you know the importance of, of sort of defining exactly what something like on time start means and you know you threw out a bunch of things that you know um you know maybe are, are, are measurables or things that we can look at but do you guys you know do a lot of discussion and clarification of definitions or is it pretty cut and dry do you sort of the everybody in accounting knows this or or whatever How, how's that work for you I think we're needing to do an awful lot of definition work. As a matter of fact, I just got out of a, of a working session between HR and finance on just defining what an FTE is. Because what, I mean, a lot of times what you'll find is that we've got reports running around the organization with, with data around employees. Um, and and, there's, and what, there's what we would call dueling data. And, and why is that? And so, so I do think it's important for us to define um, when we talk about what is the start time, when does the clock start ticking for lead time for an invoice? Is it the invoice date that the vendor put on there or is it the date that we log it into the system? Well, from the customer's perspective, it's when they sent the invoice, right? That's, that's when their clock started ticking. Um, and, and, and if it took us a week for, to get it into the system, then, then part of that is our responsibility. Part of that is transition time, but, but it's still part of what we need to look at. So yeah, I, think it's, I don't think that's necessarily clear. When does the, in your example, when does the clock start ticking so we can define the overall lead time for a process as well as an on-time start. And I think we have to get clear on those definitions and we have to, to reference back to um, who's the customer and, and let's, not miss, let's not miss what's important to them as we're defining it. Otherwise, we're gonna make improvements that are potentially helpful for us, but invisible to the customer. Yeah, and, and you know what, uh, your, the discussion sort of makes me think of, of one thing that, uh, you know, I want to maybe sort of point out to the system, but to the students, but, you know, I always sort of think in terms like the customer measures things in calendar time, but we're measuring things in shifts and work time, right? And the customer kind of doesn't care that we don't work weekends. It, you know, they, they still just want the product, you know, at the time that they want it. Um, is that, and, and I want to also sort of bend the, the conversation towards, you know, what is, what is lean accounting or what, you know, what's different about lean accounting versus standard accounting? And I don't know if this is an entryway into, you know, what we measure, what we look at when we, we talk about lean accounting versus uh, standard accounting, but you're, you're the expert. And you had a lot of questions in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot to unpack. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, the, the first part was, yeah, the customer doesn't care whether weekends are in the way I think about that a lot when I think about closing the month end results, um, you know, accounting teams want them, want the first day of the month to be Friday. So they have a weekend to work, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's really overburdening the team. Um, I, I want to get the, I want to get the financial results as soon as possible for a lot of reasons. Um, but, uh, but, but you're right. I mean, the, ultimately we're pushing back up against what, what does the customer need, but doing the work in a way that doesn't overburden the people are doing the work. The other thing that you asked about, is this an in into, uh, into some definitions of lean accounting? How is lean accounting different? And I think 
And at a high level, lean accounting really uh, uh, is encouraging us to look at, just like it went, we would in operations, uh, what are process indicators of the outcome? So in healthcare, we have a lot of complexity in billing and getting paid for services that we provide. And we often look at the end of the pipe, which is, did a service get denied? Did the insurance company pay us less than we expected? Or did they pay us zero? That's the end of the pipe. And what what we want to do in lean accounting is get up as far upstream in the process as possible and be measuring uh, what are the what are metrics that that inform us around potential causes like did we have a patient who didn't have who had incorrect insurance information or, or from whom we didn't get a prior authorization for a procedure and if we can count those things we can fix them before it's too late um, and we still have the opportunity to influence the outcome uh, that's one way that lean accounting is a little bit different, in particular as it's applied to accounting and finance. Um, you might have other questions about that too. Happy to go into other aspects of how lean accounting and finance is different from more conventional accounting and finance. But uh, but I'll pause and uh, see if you or any of the students has a particular area of interest. So so this is uh, you know so encouraging you guys to sort of think of questions or things that you might have. Just, um, just just sort of quick background question from the class. Have you guys taken an MBA accounting course or anything yet, right? So last quarter, so it was like uh, 40 hours of sort of accounting sort of thing. Is that anybody have uh, any <laughs> any impressions of that? Was it was it a good class, bad class? Uh, see head nodding and I asked two questions. So it was head not good, head not bad. Let's see, I'll start with, start with Jake. You want to give uh, Mike a little bit of uh, exposure to what MBAs learn at uh, Cal Poly as far as accounting goes? Sure, yeah. So it was, it was, good. It was an overview. It was kind of... I, I think, Mike, can you can you hear uh, Jake? Go ahead. All right, yeah. So the, the accounting class was a... Okay, perfect. It was an overview class. So just, you know, P&L statements, um, and the, the three basic financial documents uh, for a company. But I also had a question. Um, when we learn lean, it's usually the context of manufacturing. That's kind of how it got started. You can see very clearly, you know, waste that's happening, like someone's moving a pallet around. When it's more administrative or more computer-based work, what metrics do you collect and how is it different compared to a more physical process? Um, really good question. Um, it's not... It's actually not a lot different. Here's an example. We have uh, a new service that we're providing. Um, and uh, so the clinical folks are doing this, this thing for patients and the bills make it to the finance team. And finance team realizes that before they can send the bills out the door, they actually need to completely adjust the, the, the medical record in order for it to be billing compliant. So there's a back end fix. What we can measure Right. For each month, I was having one team member take about a day doing this. So I can measure the amount of time taken on the waste. I can measure the number of transactions that are being corrected. Um, and then we can look at how to fix that. Now, that's not an awful lot different than defect correction in operations. If we're at the end of an assembly line and X percentage of, of cars, bikes, whatever it is we're producing, uh, need rework before they can be shipped to the customer, um, then we're going to have that same time wasted. And, and it's going to be number of units of products and amount of time taken to, to correct the defects. Um, so, so in that way, um, even though what we're looking at is people, you know, doing keystrokes on computers, that a lot of the types of waste and the measures of those wastes, defect rates, um, you know, cycle time, lead time, they're going to be very similar. Yeah, good question. Thanks for starting us out. Toby, you had something? Let me uh, I'm sort of turn it. I'll get a camera in person. Sure. Uh, I was going to ask, uh, in a lot of accounting, you try to rest for a the problems try to wrap up their budget that year ahead that might spend a little bit more money on things that they don't necessarily need but would like and they want to use a good budget so they get the same budget next year, right? And that's not necessarily a lean practice. How do you reconcile that kind of idea with lean practice? Yeah, we need we need budgets, Mike. Okay, that's a favorite for me because I spent a lot of time in my prior role on that. I can foresee doing that here as well. Um, uh, so you're, you're exactly right. That is commonly what's happened. Gee, I need to use up my budget or I'm going to lose it um, because my next year's budget's based on how much I spent. Um, the lean approach would be to look more at a, um, at, a, at, a quarter, at a quarterly planning review that says, how much do you need to serve your customers? 
based on some set of standards, right? We, we talk a lot about standards in, in lean, right? So, so in manufacturing, you might have standards that say, you know, this production line ought to be able to produce, you know, 10, 100, 1,000 units a day. Uh, and if we deviate from that standard, then we're, we're gonna do some problem solving. We're in root, root cause analysis, figure out what's going on in operations that's not allowing us to have that level of throughput to meet our rate of customer demand. The same thing would apply then to how do we do financial planning? What is the, based on the, based on the current level of customer demand, which is driving our revenue, what is our level of resource? And that's gonna be people, equipment, supplies, that is necessary for that. So if I spent it or not, it's it, it becomes less relevant in terms of am I going to get that allocation to spend in the future because I'm being held to a current uh, a current uh, performance metric that is what's uh, that's what's allowing me to contribute to margin. So that's a quick answer, um, but I'll pause there in case you've got a clarification or if somebody else wants to add on because there's there's a lot to talk about in terms of lean financial planning, which is not a twelve month fixed calendar budget. Um, a little bit building off of that. You might want to up the volume. But this this is the microphone for, oh, for you guys. Sorry, it's not just the yeah, okay. um, Yeah, a little <laughs> building off of that. So if teams are more accurate in predicting their budgets and forecasting that, are you more likely to give them their exact budget and not push back as much as teams that are less accurate in predicting their budgets? Or how does that work? I'm actually not going to give somebody a budget. I'm I'm never really going to say as a lean finance leader, you you have permission to spend that is um, that is any different than what what we agree is a requirement now to meet the rate of customer demand. Um, so it's not that it's not that I'm going to go out to a director of a of a, of a part of operations and say, you know, what what's your estimate for what you need. Uh, we're going to line that up with what what is actually required to to meet customer requirements, and then we'll we'll check that on a, either a monthly or a quarterly basis, depending on how quickly customer demand changes. But I also have the expectation that in real time, if customer demand has an uptick or a downturn, that the that the manager is going to or the director is going to manage to um, manage their expenses to the degree that they can to 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 meet that change in customer demand. So it's less about for me, it's less about are they good or not good at predicting what they're what they need. It's more about are are we holding to a, to an operational indicator that's going to result that's going to that's going to result in the financial outcome. How do you pick your indicators? This still beats follow up question. Uh, how do how do we pick the indicators? Uh, first of all, we spend some time looking at what actually drives revenue, um, and so it could be as simple as uh, we build bikes, we sell bikes. It could be as complicated as in healthcare um, or even in things like software development where we have a long lead time on producing a product. And so it's a little bit more complicated to say what actually drives revenue, but we're gonna start with what are the, what are the operational metrics that result in the revenue that we're able to collect each month, quarter, uh, month or, or quarter, whatever the right time, time period is. Um, and then we'll look at how that relates to what what's driving our consumption of operating expense um and and that's how we that's how we land on our metrics you can you can be in healthcare in an environment where you're getting paid um an overall case rate uh to take care of a patient um and and it's not going to make any sense if you look if you get a you know a, a certain dollar per month um amount to care for patient x it doesn't matter how many services they use you're just going to get that flat amount we need to we need to be clear that there's that you know how 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 the ex, expense driver and the revenue driver relate. Sometimes they're really really closely related. Sometimes they're not. But that's where we have to start. Yeah, thank you, Toby. I, you know, I think you know makes me. Uh, I, I guess you know so so companies you know usually come at lean accounting maybe from from the operation side, right? So the you know, the, the manufacturing or the, the services, you know, uh, operations folks kind of get the, you know, drink the lean Kool-Aid. And then it's, it's about trying to account, uh, convince the finance and accounting folks how to go along with a little bit. Um, so, so for these guys, um, you know, going into companies, how did, I, I guess, like, what, what would sort of be their sort of key things to look for? 
in trying to you know make that alignment happen or like what what are the what are the steps or how do you how do you go about making that happen i think the first thing that i look for if you're an operations leader um is is there is there any information that's coming from finance or accounting that is either confusing or complicating your focus on continuous improvement in your lean operations. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we want to do is understand what's causing that confusion. Sometimes in manufacturing, we have, and even in service industries, we have these financial statements that are lagged. Um, and so they're not particularly timely, but I think more significantly, they have, they have a, um, I have a lot of allocation. So when I look at the numbers in my profit and loss statement, you were talking about the diff three different types of financial statements. When I look at my revenue and expense and then my net profit, however that's, however that's represented, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of, uh, of expenses that are allocated together, but that don't necessarily behave in the same way. So I might, I, I might have, um, the direct labor that's used to produce my product or service, but there might be an allocation of overhead or something else on top of that. Um, I, there, so there may be a lot of there may be a lot of of, um, of accounting mechanics that go into the financial statements that make them harder to use. So the first thing I look at is is anything that's coming out of finance and accounting confusing or 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 complicating your ability to move forward with lean process improvement. Um, <laughs> It might, can I, I want to interrupt at this point because it, it occurs to me. So one of the things for this week's preparation is the the class had to watch the movie The Goal, right? right. And, we, and we talked, we did a little bit of a debrief on it and whatnot. But you know, the goal in theory constraints sort of talks about this you know total cost <laughs> sort of approach, which I always sort of felt was was very similar to you know the, the kind of lean approach where in accounting, where you know slicing and dicing those uh, allocations maybe in a not real meaningful way for the folks that are actually doing the work. Um, do, right. do you have sort of a take on that on the on the theory constraints and lean accounting and how that what, does that play well together or not? Yeah, they, or? yeah, they they do, and and I agree. I mean, the one of the things that we and one of the reasons I brought that up and as an re initial response to the to the question that you all posed was because. One of the first places to go with lean accounting is to ensure that that we're that we're not just not slowing down or getting in the way of the lean transformation, but actually supporting it. And that usually the first thing that that requires is re uh, restructuring the financial statements and then adopting some more real time indicators of financial performance that are that are operational non financial. So um, so one of the things that we'll tend to do first is is a pull apart all of these allocations so that operational leaders can see direct, the direct expenses um, and they're very very transparent uh, and then anything else that we need to reflect as far as overhead we, we can show it but it is but it's it's separated out so that we understand you know the the who's who can influence which of these costs and revenues um, and have it have it separated out so that um, so that so that we can see um how how they behave very very transparently yeah mike and, and, I, and so i interrupted you and i was kind of trying to i know we only got about five minutes left and so i was kind of asking you to sort of go through well you know if, if you're going to the lean accounting direction you know what are, what are sort of the big things to start or sort of look for as you go into that into that process getting the operation or getting the accounting and finance stuff better aligned with, with what we're doing in operations. Yep, I mean, first thing is gonna be getting the accounting and operations folks together and understanding how the operations folks are using the financial information to, to, to make decisions and, and, improve, and improve outcomes. Um, and one of the first things you're gonna find is that a lot of times the financial statements are not particularly useful either because they have all these allocations and or because they're lagged and it's just too late. Um, and so that's one of the first things that we want to address is the usability of the financial statements and the other performance reporting information that's going to operations. Um, and, uh, and, and that's going to be a co combination of the, adjusting the financial statements themselves. You may have heard the, um, Eric, you may have heard the term or probably have heard the term plain English financials. 
Um, and uh, but then also um, adding on those key operational indicators that 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 operations folks are managing that are the drivers of the financial outcomes. So that's that's really that's step number one. Excellent. So, so is there a step two? <laughs> yeah, step two honestly depends on yeah there is but there you could branch out for step two depending on what your organizational priorities are some organizations yeah. really suffer from the fact that that financial information is lied because it takes too long to close the books let's go there maybe the maybe the accounting team says we can't think about this lean stuff because we're too overburdened so we got to get some waste out of there um, out of their work to free up some capacity to, to start to, to focus on this. Um, you may have like in healthcare, one of the first places we go is the revenue, pro revenue, the revenue cycle, the billing processes, because we often have so many, so much defect correction and so much uh, potentially collectible revenue that we're not collecting. So it's gonna depend from there on your organizational priorities, your industry um, and, and, uh, and understanding that. Yeah. Um Let's see, you know, one of the things that, that that sort of one of the aspects of that is you know trying to free up the the time of the the accounting and the financial folks, you know, maybe to to, to focus on these lean questions or issues, and, and those people are always well, they're 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 usually very highly paid, and they're also usually very busy. Um, but it, it, when you were talking about it, it maybe sort of reflect back to you know what we did with the quality folks in the operations area where you know we took them and said okay instead of being inspectors and policemen you know we're going to now make you sort of consultants and coaches on you know telling the organization how to improve quality is there a similar thing you think or role for the accounting is that sort of a similar sort of play it's a very very similar play and, and i know some of the founders of the lean accounting thought movement in, in the u.s really started with that is flipping the flipping the proportion of time that finance and accounting professionals are spending just doing transactional work, a lot of which is defect correction, to using the skills and capabilities to be more of a business partner, business consultant for the organization. And I know that, I mean, in my, my the last organization I worked in and had a team of 30 folks, that, that's really what they wanted to do. And so a big focus of our time was getting the, uh, the waste out of their day-to-day -day work to free up more of their time to, to focus on the analysis and the consultative role. And, and I can already see the same desire on the team here. Um, so yes, very, very parallel. And, and you know, the nice thing for the people too is, I, I, well, I guess, you know, from, from my discussions with accountants and things, um, you know, with the little bean counter analogy sort of thing, I don't know if anybody that really sort of super enjoys closing the books or doing all that transactional work. And if we could free them up for the more fun stuff, you know, that's that's kind of a good respect for people move too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, hey Mike, I, I see we're at the getting on the top of the hour. I really appreciate you coming and doing this. Um, I'll send you a, a copy of this this recording um, for you know posterity or for archive uh, purposes or whatnot. I really appreciate it. But as we wrap up, usually in our lead celebrity interviews, we wrap up with, you know, uh, words of wisdom or uh, advice for the next generation of lean managers or heading out in the world. Um, what piece of advice would you give these guys? The thing that served me, the, thanks for that question. The thing that's really served me well that I would encourage everyone to do, you may be in a finance role, you may not, you may be in an operations or another, another role. Um, really seek out a partnership between finance, operations, quality, human resources. Um, I think it's that co-learning that really helps us better understand the problems we're trying to solve and serve the organization. Um, that's Those are my closing words of wisdom, if that's helpful. That is real helpful, Mike. Okay, thanks a lot. And I'm gonna, um, I don't know how much you can see this. I'll, I'll do the, the audience scan, but if you could uh, go ahead and um, give Mike a hand. We'll We got, that, we got that on camera, Mike. Thank you. you, uh, you know, feel right, free to send here. feel Thank feel you. feel Go free ahead. to send follow up questions. Always happy to come back. I really appreciate y'all's time. Okay, good deal, Mike. Take care. Bye bye. bye.